Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Viscounts of the West Kingdom from Renegade Game Studio. Disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this one. I had a bit of a meh reaction to the solo play in Paladins of the West Kingdom, the first game in the series I had tried, but several viewers suggested that I would enjoy Viscounts better. And uh, let's see if they were right and get to the list. So first, for my number five, I'm going to start with a mix, which is focused on the game's variety. And on the positive side, the AI, when you play solo, is pretty cool in that you can have four different AI, and if you find it too easy, which <laughs> I find ridiculous, it's very challenging, but if you find it too easy, you can give it more powerful cards. But overall, I really like the inclusion of these four different AI. Now, the reason this is a mix is because they don't actually play that differently in terms of how they impact the player. Yes, you might be able to mess with some things they do a bit more, and there might be a different kind of pace to the game based on what kind of game they're playing, but it's not like such a huge difference if this is uh, some amazing AI that'll feel completely different in four different ways. But for my number four, I am going into a full pro again on the AI, which is the actual running of the AI. Now, I've said this in other reviews, but just to make it clear, I tend to like AIs and Automa that model a real player, maybe with some bonuses or different ways they play, instead of ones that are like really kind of abstracted or just chasing your own score. And this one models a player in so many ways, like almost everything you can do to an actual player works here. They have almost all the exact same mechanisms as you, but the AI plays so smoothly. I love their little deck that gets upgraded. It reminds me a lot of the Imperial AI I covered recently. And yeah, overall, it's just a very quick to resolve, pleasurable AI to play against. The one knock I might give is that late game when they have a lot of powers unlocked, it can sometimes be a little tough to keep track of everything. But besides that, it is great. I have another pro at number three, a core mechanic of the game, which is the Virtue and Corruption track. So as you take different actions, shuffle your deck, hire new people into your deck, these little Virtue and Corruption tokens will move on this track, and when they meet, it'll pull cards from this Deed deck or this Debt deck, depending on where they meet, and it'll also have an effect on the other players. And all this is really cool because it gives you kind of these different choices to make, like do you want to go really heavy at Criminals, which will move your tracker to the right, do you want to get more Virtuous? people and you've got to pay attention to what the AI is doing. This is probably the biggest intersection between the AI and your player which is really neat. And on top of that these deed and debt cards I mentioned are the timer of the game and controlling them controls the entire pace of when the game ends. It's all really cool in multiplayer and works really well in solo as well. And I've got another pro at number two, a lot of them for this game, and that is the card row and the card play from turn to turn. So your turns in this game are super simple. You basically slide all your cards down in the row, you play a new card, you move a bit, you take an action, done. But that little choice of which card to play is very interesting and consistently engaging. Because first of all, the card you play will have a value at the top that says how far you'll move for the round, which will totally change in many ways the actions available to you. But then the cards you play will also have icons, and you want to chain together icons of the same type so you can pull off really big actions and big bonuses, but then you need to figure out when you want to transition and how to kind of skim through your deck to get the right combos built at the right times. So all together, it's just a really fun system to play with the cards, and it stays fresh and feels unique each time you play with kind of how your engine works out. And speaking of engines, that goes right into my number one, another pro, man, this game is good, and that is the upgrading options available. So one of the big ones is this game is a deck builder, and that goes into these great cards I just mentioned. You have all these cards around the board, a ton of information to see kind of what your upgrading options might be, and you can add them into your deck, and it really feels like an impactful deck builder, because every time you play one of these cards you've bought, it'll stick around for three turns and continue to influence things for all three of those turns. But the upgrading doesn't stop there. You can build buildings, each with a bonus. You can get manuscripts that'll eventually give you big bonuses. You can go into this castle and get extra resources and things from there. And the upgrading and the victory paths in this game are kind of my favorite way for Euros to do it, in that I can hyper-focus on something, but I also have the ability to kind of cross-pollinate out. And getting a bonus here will then make my actions be better over there. So I really like how it all functions and kind of ties together. So overall, I was really surprised by Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Again, I thought Paladins was just okay, but for my taste, not saying this is going to apply to everybody else, but for me, this was a great Euro game, and I usually don't like Euros that much, but this one really impressed me. 
And as for you, I think this might be one to check out if you like uh, deck building games, if you like games with kind of a rondelle or like movement of a pawn, like Great Western Trail, the movement of your Viscount in this one feels very similar to that. And also you might like it if, like me, you enjoy AI that are kind of like a fully featured player, or if you like varied upgrade and victory point paths, but that do allow you to focus heavily on a single path in one game. On the other hand, you might want to avoid this one if you like more abstracted AI where you don't have to kind of track everything for them. You might also want to avoid it if you like your solo games to have constant in-your-face competition with the AI, because a lot of times this game can feel like multiplayer solitaire. There are points of intersection, but you'll often just be able to do what you want to do without really worrying about the AI. And hey, if you'd like to see a playthrough of this one, we've got two of them. We've got a full solo playthrough, and additionally, Peter and I did a live playthrough of the Tome Saga expansion, so you can check that one out too. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.